you guys see this story? Why Blumhouse hasn't resurrected Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th? I saw a story recently that, I guess this story, um, <laughs> that Jason Blum, I, I used to say Blum and people give me crap about it, but Jason Blum literally was trying to seek out uh, Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street rights. So here's my question to you before I read this story. Would you have been okay with Blumhouse owning all three uh, major franchises? Friday the 13th, Halloween, Nightmare on Elm Street. Um, does it matter to you? Do, I, I mean, because really, if you think about it, Blumhouse, it's an umbrella, right? Um, there's different companies, different production companies uh, below Blumhouse that make their movies and Blumhouse says, okay, yeah, uh, let's let's go ahead and do that. So they don't literally um, make the movies. Different directors, different production companies make the movies. And Blumhouse is just that umbrella. But there is like a stigma with Blumhouse. And, you know, it does get kind of a bad rap. But I think it's just Blumhouse, they're not really into what you would call art house types of horror movies. They're just not. You might see the occasional pop up. But for the most part, they're just not really into that, you know? They make, I, I hate to use this term, but they make pretty much like cheeseburger horror movies, you know? Cheeseburger, fun, you know, and slasher movies fit right into that mold. So, to me, a good movie is a good movie. Um, uh, Blumhouse, they have a good business ethic, and they, you know, they do put out good movies. You, you know, Halloween and Halloween Kills... Don't get me wrong. There are people that absolutely fucking hate those movies, okay? I'm talking like from a production standpoint. I can see dollars on the screen. I can see talent. Is David Gordon Green a talented director? I think so. I do. I think he's a, a talented director. If you look at the behind the scenes on those movies, you can see passion there. You can see that these are fans of the Halloween franchise. And look, you know, sometimes fans make movies that aren't good. Sometimes, you know, you, you swing and you miss. It, it happens. You can have passion, but you still might not have um, a, a positive end result. It happens. But I can appreciate when I do see passion behind a project. Me personally, I so far, I'm two for two. I love Halloween 2018. I love Halloween Kills, okay? That's just me. There's a lot of people that don't like Halloween 2018 and especially, especially do not like Halloween Kills. It, 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 and as soon as I left that movie, I was like, oh boy, this is going to be divisive <laughs> because this is something that they have never tried in the franchise, you know, with Halloween Kills. They, they've never tried to introduce the entire town, not to this scale anyway, have Myers take on the town of Haddonfield. So you could get yourself in trouble. So when people say they don't like that movie, they, they say they downright hate the movie. I understand it. I do understand it. Um, but I'm not against uh, Blumhouse owning all three. You know, I don't think they're an evil corporation, you know. Um, would I prefer them not to own all three, but another company own Nightmare or Friday? Yeah, I would probably prefer that. But if it means I can get a new Nightmare on Elm Street and a new Friday the 13th, I'm down. I'm completely down. Why Blumhouse hasn't resurrected Nightmare on Elm Street and Friday the 13th? Uh, Jason, Jason Blum recently addressed why Blumhouse Productions have not yet tackled a modern reboot of famous slasher franchises, Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. While Freddy Krueger and Jason Voorhees may not have started the slasher genre, they were certainly instrumental in its sustained popularity through the 1980s. Freddy, a sadistic specter who terrorized his victims within their dreams, and Jason, an undead, silent, unstoppable killing machine, terrified audiences in a series of expansive sequels seemingly dedicated to exploring how each one could dismember their teenage victims. This ultimately came to a head in 2003 film, Freddy vs. Jason, which saw the two finally come to blows with the winner being left fairly ambiguous. Uh, ever since, they've struggled to maintain the same level of dominance in the 21st century and have been relegated to broader pop culture reference points. Let me stop right there, and I want to say something. Okay. Um, 
Freddy versus Jason. I was just, I was just thinking about Freddy versus Jason today, and the Name on Elm Street franchise. There was a like a steady decline. You know, you might like how uh, you might like Friday or sorry, you might like Nightmare One, Two, Three, Four, but even you can admit. There's a there's a gradual decline. It's not like say, and I'm not saying this is better or worse, but it's not like like Halloween where there's hills and valleys. You know, it's almost worse to have hills and valleys. But I think more than any other franchise, Nightmare just has a steady decline. Steady decline. New Nightmare, steady decline. You know, some people don't like New Nightmare. I don't. Um, some people love New Nightmare, but I'm not a fan. But yeah, it just feels like. A steady decline and Freddy wasn't Freddy or wasn't great to me after part three you know and I can have some fun with part four but even I can can admit that Freddy wasn't scary in four at all in three that three is the start of the comedy Freddy but he's he's the perfect balance in three Freddy is still scary in three the the scene where he's doing like the puppeteer that's some that's some creepy ass shit you know i remember seeing that in the theater when um what's the guy's name what's the kid's name damn it's on the tip of my tongue but he's he's walking he's sleepwalking and he's got the freaking uh the 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 freddy strings of blood coming out of his his hand what was his name that's driving me crazy now but yeah, yeah. Freddy was scary in part three. That's the point I'm trying to make. But from the, that point on, I, I never found Freddy really scary. I think in New Nightmare, there's some... But Freddy only kills, I think... What does he kill, like one or two people in New Nightmare? Um, he has a, a, a kind of a scary presence, but he's nowhere near what he was in the first two movies. The first two movies, uh, Freddy's scary as fuck, Okay. And I, I've defended the, the remake, and I'll still def- defend the remake and, and until my cold, dead hand uh, goes out Evil Dead style out of the grave. But um, I've defended the remake because I like Freddy in that movie. I think Freddy is scary again. Yes, a different actor played him. But would I rather have a different actor who's going to be scary as fuck, or would I rather have the same actor from the last four movies? Granted, he's a legend. Don't get me wrong, Robert England is a legend, okay? Not taking that away from him. But the character itself, just a comedic decline. So when Jackie Earl Haley came to play, and yes, he came to play, I was, I was, you know, I was like, this is finally the nightmare movie that I've I've wanted, you know? Is it perfect? No, it's definitely not perfect. There are problems with this movie, but overall, and I know I'm being very controversial right now, okay? There are people that hate there are people that think the nightmare remake is the worst remake ever which i do not understand by the way like i've seen far worse remakes out there okay but i mean if you want a serious freddy movie that's pretty much what it is okay so what was the what was my point where the hell was i going with this okay oh freddy versus jason yeah so my point was freddy and freddy versus jason is probably the best portrayal of the character since dream warriors and let's think back dream Warriors came out in what 87 87 i think uh and freddy versus jason 2003 so if i do my howard stern math that's 97 uh and then so six so 16 years yeah 16 years since we had um a a great freddy You know, and he's not just, he's not good. He's great in um, Freddy versus Jason. And I think that's a good reason why Freddy versus Jason is so effective because of Robert England. You know, everything was on point. The freaking lighting was on point. The budget was on point. The set design, everything was, you know, they took Freddy and Jason very seriously in that movie. And thank God they did, you know. And I'm shocked that they never did a a sequel to it because it would have made, it would have made gangbusters, I think. 19, is it 19 years? 19 years. Okay. Well, when did Freddy... 2003, right? 87 to 2003. I think that's 16 years, Booster C. Uh-oh, JD Ultra says Dream Wars is bad. 
Uh-oh. I don't know about that. Dream Wars is great, dude. Dream Wars is like one of the best sequels ever made. Horror sequels, you know? It's like the Terminator 2 of horror sequels. Okay? Oh, man. Um, Cody Falk, what's up, brother? How you doing? Cody Falk's hard working. Got a lot of projects under his belt. Um, uh-oh. Super chat. Cody, nice to see you in here, brother. Wet paint pictures. Um, uh, AMBW channel says Friday the 13th, 2009 was criminally underrated. I don't know if underrated is the term to use, given that most horror fans I talk to like or love the movie. So I wouldn't say it's underrated. I, you know, I, cause a lot of times people will use the term underrated because somebody doesn't like the movie. It, like if, if two people don't like the movie, then they say eh, it's underrated. No, it's not really underrated. And I'm not, I'm not trying to be a dick to you, AMBW. I'm just saying, I think the term underrated is overrated. <laughs> That's what I'm trying to say. Um, and why haven't we gotten another Freddy movie? That crappy remake. Did, <laughs> did you just miss the last part? You weren't here five minutes ago, were you, AMBW? I was just praising, singing praises to the remake. <laughs> In the meantime, producer Jason Blum has been building a steady reputation with his production company, Blumhouse. Formed in 2000, the company has established a methodology of producing films. Loba. I just complained about this shit. Like, the, is this Screen Rant? Yep, it's Screen Rant. Okay. And I'm, try, I'm not trying to shit all over Screen Rant, but man, I swear these articles just get to the point. Get to the point. Okay. Via his Twitter account, Jason Blum recently confirmed why Blumhouse hasn't overseen reboots for Friday the 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street. I think they're just trying to assume that like every reader doesn't, they aren't privy to uh, Nightmare on Friday. That's what I'm, so, so I guess I can't blame them. They're trying to set the table. They're setting the table for those that aren't that familiar with the, or might not know the, the situation with the two. Okay. All right. I stand corrected. All right. Uh, Blum started a thread inviting his followers to ask any questions they had for him. Eventually, one fan asked whether he would reboot Friday or Nightmare just as he had done with Halloween. Blum confirmed that he's been trying to do just that for years, but ultimately has been unable to secure the rights in order to do so. That's pretty big. And you can see the tweet right there. Have been trying to make the rights for years. Can't get rights. Huh. So this will be dis disappointing to fans who have been seeing the company's mostly stellar track record and want Freddie and Jason in safe hands. If they can't get the rights, well, like what's the holdup? Is it like a, a money thing? Like m maybe they maybe uh, both companies want more money because doesn't New Line own the rights to both of those right now? So I'm thinking that they're trying to, and correct me if I'm wrong in, in the chat guys, but is is new line uh like they're wanting more money is that is that the deal i don't know or or like why wouldn't new line pursue a new um nightmare movie uh but especially friday since the uh the um the lawsuit is at a halt you know if they can, you know, because I don't know the 100% if they can yet, but I think they can. So, and what's the deal with Nightmare on Elm Street? Like, was it the, the weren't, the, weren't the rights sold to um, a certain company or something like that? Somebody bought the rights. Uh, West, oh, here we go. Thank you, Chris. Wes Craven uh, Estate owns Nightmare right now. Okay, so I'm wondering what's the, re like, you know, and it makes me sad because I'm wondering, like, if Wes Craven was alive maybe we would have uh, a new nightmare movie and maybe the family, they just, I don't know what it is. I don't know what it is because the fans, like I want a new nightmare movie more than anything right now. You know, that's like my number one. I want a new nightmare movie. So not new nightmare, but I want a nightmare on Elm street movie so bad. I wouldn't even mind um, a, a sequel to the remake if that's possible, e even though it's been freaking 11 years. Um, you know, stay that, stay the course. I'd be fine with that. It's, it's too late at this point anyway. So, uh, you reboot it, do something, you know, like would nightmare fare better with the requel angle, you know, like they were, they were going over and scream, you know, what if they did that? 